I just love it. I mean, when when we did it a couple of years ago, um, around Thailand, Cambodia, yeah, Vietnam, wasn't and it? Vietnam, we said we must do one properly because we were doing it with the BBC and we weren't able because of the BBC to compete properly. And then we wanted to do this one, but we didn't get here soon enough to sort it out, basically, because we've only just come here to live. And um, we, just we, couldn't, yeah. we couldn't do it justice, but we can at least be envious of everyone who's going to have an incredible three weeks. And seeing them now, it's like, oh, God, I'm going to Stand here for hours most days, <laughs> waving. <laughs> My favourite is the school bus. We wave to the school <laughs> bus, don't we? We're about an hour north of Auckland and it's just beautiful. And the people here are so friendly and we're house hunting at the moment. Um, I've always been somebody who, who was sort of, if I say international it sounds grand, but I've always felt there was a life outside the UK. So I had a house in the south of France and, uh, and a place uh, in Monaco and and then we came here three years ago three years ago we came here and then just fell totally in love with the place you can tell I used to be in television can I give you a very long answer <laughs> that covers all the possible questions you could ask me <laughs> well no I'm going to say no is there any chance of you coming back <laughs> <laughs> not to television no no definitely not but in t I mean just seeing these cars and seeing the happy faces uh, I have to do this again. We, we had a little uh, experience with the Saigon rally, but there was more obligation on doing it for television than there was competing in, in the event. And it got me wound up, and thankfully Liz got very wound up about it. And I think if we find the right car, we have to do one of these rallies. Clearly not New Zealand, we've got to find somewhere else now. Well, we watched Road to Saigon, we really enjoyed it, but we could see you chomping at the bit, thinking, oh, it was I want to do the proper rally. Oh, we, but, uh, yes. <laughs> and it just, oh God, you're bringing back all the memories of how frustrating it was to be followed by this crew in an SUV, and they could hear us in, in the MG, and they could hear us chatting and whatever, and the moment we said, come on, let's put the hammer down, they're going, no, no. No, no, we've had a message from London, you mustn't, uh, you mustn't go quickly. Because you know, there was that unfortunate incident involving the Kemps right at the beginning, where Shirley rolled the Mini, and uh, London, that's all they ever said, London has been on the phone and said, no, tone it down, tone it, which was a great show, it really was. The MGB GT, oh, a good rally car. Oh, it was so well prepared, it was fantastic, you know. Uh, I wanted to buy it actually and I missed the opportunity afterwards. That car, and it was fettled by a brilliant guy called Alan Pettit, and we just loved it. We absolutely adored it. I mean, it just became part of us. I mean, it, it was tough actually. I, I think people don't realise when you go to somewhere like Southeast Asia, it was 45 degrees in the car at one point. And the BBC kept saying, would we stop? and be filmed doing other things and whatever. And we were soaking wet. I mean, Liz did a lot of the driving and she said, this must be what it's like to drive an Arga. Because we were absolutely roasting. But a great car, great car. Now you were apparently rumoured to be quite close to doing this rally, the New Zealand Classic. And yeah. so what happened there? Uh, uh, just pure timing. We left the UK last year and by the time we got ourselves here and sorted out one or two things, selling a business, selling a property in the UK and whatever, we, we discussed it and we thought, well, the time we ship a car or acquire a car here, it just got too much. It was one of those, I regret it now, seeing all this, it was one of those decisions that felt sensible at the time, but now I'm thinking we should, we should have got off our asses and done it. But in all of those cars that you've just seen go past, apart from the MG, is there anything that you fancy using in future events? I love those old Bentleys. I think they look, but you've got to have some balls, haven't you? Because you make a mistake in one of those and it's going to hurt your bank balance as, as well as possibly your body. Um, I've just got this thing about V8s as, as, as well. You know, I do like that rumbling sound of the Falcon or the Mustang going past. I'd love to do it in a Camaro because when I did 
the saloon car racing, the races were all won by Camaros before they changed the rules. But um, I don't really mind. It, it's, I think it's the camaraderie that makes this so good. So there's the competition, the camaraderie, and of course you get to see wonderful places as well. Yeah. But just take you back a little bit now to your love of cars and your love of racing. Let's say GT40 to you. Oh, no. No, I'll have to go and have a cold shower now. <laughs> Where do you think that car is now? Well, because uh, uh, I'm a bit of an enthusiast when it comes to the GT40. So my first chassis was uh, 1072, which was the last of the Mark I road cars they made. I think they made five of them. Uh, and it went to Florida at some point. I then had chassis 1013, which I saw was in some auction five years ago and it went for something like 6.5 million. So I've got a horrible feeling the GT40 is out of my league now. But hey, never say never. If I had the chance, I'd have one of those again instantly. So there was that Goodwood race on oh. the Centurion and there they oh. were, a grid full of GT40s. Yes, and so I was um, excited in a masculine way to look at all these cars lined up. Um, and then I almost couldn't watch at the first corner because, as you know, people take it seriously. It's not an exhibition. And when they all piled into that first corner, I think, no, no. Although I might be able to buy one cheap. I suppose the early example of the crossover between rally and race and mix of the two was a tour of Britain oh, yes. with James Hunt. Oh, what about that, that? What a combination. Oh, it was irresistible. <laughs> But in the days when, the next weekend, he was competing in the British Grand Prix. And, um, yeah, I don't think he thought much of my abilities as a navigator, but it was a, it was a big story because Radio 1 threw a lot of effort behind it. Hunt was clearly very hot. Um, he was a lovely guy. I mean, and, and for me to be able to tick that box of life's experiences. I mean, I've had some great experiences. I've met some fantastic people. And uh, <laughs> to actually be able to tell Nicky Lauder, as I did when I met him at the Monaco Grand Prix two years ago, that James Hunt had driven me into a tree, <laughs> Nicky instantly wanted to know, how did that happen? How did that happen? And he's, he's, this is a man who's, who's told every story. He's heard every story. But actually, little Noel quite impressed, Nicky. Bless you, Nicky. Um, yeah, James drove into a tree. You'd have missed the tree. You'd have missed the tree. James hit the tree absolutely bang on in this Vauxhall Magnum. And then, bless him, he went to start it because he said, whatever, whatever. He couldn't reach a gear lever because it was in the back of the car. <laughs> he had hit it absolutely square on. And you know, the guy's got it going again. Great days, absolute great days. But in your Radio 1 career, you did support motorsport and you gave it a big boost, especially the touring cars. Yeah, club racing, I think, uh, we were able to help hugely and take it to uh, a, a, a much wider audience. Um, I mean, I didn't do it from some altruistic point of view. Uh, I couldn't believe it when I won a celebrity race at Rose Hatch. And uh, Ford contacted me and said, would I like to actually do it properly the next year? And wonderful Roger Willis, who was the competitions director at Castrol, said, I'll put the money up. And uh, I, I didn't really have enough tuition, but I learned, I learned a lot during races. And then, of course, it got out, didn't it, uh, to Jerry Marshall and Tony Lanfranchi. The Edmunds was being paid a thousand pounds a race. It was rare for me to get past the first corner. <laughs> <laughs> People weren't happy about oh, that, goodness. but no, I, I, mean, I made some great friends. The chance to go around places like, you know, Brands Hatch and Silverstone when Woodcook Corner was that 150 mile an hour corner and a three litre Capri. I mean, how lucky is Noel Edmonds? Very lucky indeed, Noel, but as you said, but you look full circle, the classic rally which you've tasted, albeit in front of TV cameras, is something that perhaps you could take up in, in the future. Camaraderie and so on. How realistic is that proposition? Oh yeah, yeah. I, but we will do it again. I mean, I'm blessed with this wonderful lady who uh, loves cars, 
absolutely adores cars, can change a Range Rover gearbox. She is into, we saw it on the uh, Saigon series, that when the fan belt went, Liz fixed the fan belt. I was quite happy to stand back and watch this woman fix a fan belt. Um, we're, we're very into this. A couple of years ago, someone said, well, why don't you do the historic circuit racing and, and whatever. I am somebody who looks at these opportunities and goes, look, I was so lucky then. You know, is it going to be as good second time around, going back to something? But this is, this is very different. Yeah. And uh, it gives you a chance to be with cars, be in a very, very different environment, and meet interesting people who like a drink at the end of the day. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, put, yeah, put me down, put me down. Find that Camaro. <laughs> you know, we're going to find that Camaro. But I think you've got lots to choose from with Hero ERA and by the way we're moving to Vista Heritage Centre in September. Okay, that's so, in the UK isn't it? Yes, yeah, so when you come back, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> NZ UK, <laughs> you will find we're in the heart of the historic car world there and we have a fleet of hired hire and drive cars brilliant, uh, brilliant. which we'd love you to come over and, and do an event and just have a taster and see what oh, you fantastic. think. Oh fantastic. Our next big one is Flying Scotsman from Vintage Cars okay. 390 which is phenomenal. Uh, people like David Richards do it. You oh really? David yeah, Richards, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And he's now our boss of Motorsport UK. So, Brilliant. Um, but I think one of the things I, I would like to ask you about is... Do I get to ask you a question? <laughs> I'm dying to ask you a question. Go on then, no. Well, I mean, you asked me whether I'm still doing television. Have you retired? I, I finished uh, a year ago working for Al Jazeera doing their Formula One right. for three years and I, prior to that I'd been back to Sky after ITV. I did you do know Sky the audience would like you to retire. <laughs> yeah. Have you heard that expression about overstaying your welcome at yeah. the party? <laughs> exactly. I, don't. I so, think you should, you know, because <laughs> look, you're getting grey hair. <laughs> Oh, blimey, no. Right. <laughs> He's done it. He's thrown me off now. He's thrown me off. But what we want to do is try and protect the historic car movement because obviously there, there are big threats coming. Oh, yeah, yeah. And one of the big things that we're doing is we, we've tied up with a big American company, Timberland Incorporated, who are one of the big forestry companies in the world. I mean, genuinely oh, okay. going to be pumped because what we give off is very, very small now. But it's that kind of thing where in the future, the likes of you, me, etc., have got to really protect what we've got because otherwise the heritage is going to disappear. Oh, Do you have a view uh, on that? Well, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be in this country. Um, we're all aware of our relationship with the planet. And that relationship has been very, very bad. We've been abusing the planet for too long. Uh, whether you call it climate change and then you want to tax people who haven't got very much money whilst China opens a coal-fired power station every week you know I mean it mustn't be a political thing in this country they've got they've got a very realistic attitude and I've talked to a few farmers not far from here and they say things like uh, do you really think I'm going to have an electric tractor <laughs> that I'm going to be getting my sheep in in an electric ute I mean every other vehicle here is a smoking ute. So actually, I don't think New Zealand's going to conform for quite a while, which is another reason why I rather like it here. <laughs> I'm not sure it was the accurate answer. <laughs> yeah, you're going to join up with us to, to protect the uh, heritage of the, of the classic car movement, of course. You well, you've got to, you've got, you have got to do that for a variety of reasons. But the number one reason why you must protect historic vehicles of every sort they're more fun. <laughs> Don't let the fun go away. Very true. Very true. And are, are you serious? I mean, we, you said, can we talk for two minutes? <laughs> You've got no idea how busy, how busy I am. <laughs> I mean, I've got to, I've got <laughs> more people to wave to. The the milk tanker will be coming past in a minute, and if I don't wave to Doris, who drives it, she'll be really upset. <laughs> The, the last bit then on your own, I'm, <laughs> I'm batting it back to you on, on, on your illustrious career. Oh, oh shut it. Uh, <laughs> deal No Deal was, was big for you in so many series. I remember you telling me you, you filmed so many episodes per day or whatever, yeah. Bristol and so on. 
something like that. If you, if you come up with another great idea for a TV show, could that tempt you back? No. Absolutely not. No. Which part of the word no don't you understand? <laughs> You've had enough then, Noel. Look, I did 50 years. I was so fortunate. I had a wonderful career at the BBC and uh, people gave me some wonderful formats to play around with and thankfully I had a great relationship with the viewers. But I actually think that it belongs to a different era now. Television has changed hugely. You see the current arguments going on about the future of the BBC. It's all changing completely. But how lucky was I to be there in that, that golden era um, big audience figures, exciting shows to do. No, you're looking at a very satisfied person who's very keen to get on and do other things. And by the way, you're going to tell me to shut up again, but you look amazing. You look like you're about 42. 44, I don't know how you do that. <laughs> The elixir of life, I reckon it is, Noel Edmonds. But you, you, you've thank got you. It. I'll take well that, Tony. I'll take that as a huge compliment. Thank you very, very much. Thank it's you. been a pleasure. Uh, look, look. <laughs> my my younger brother, <laughs> the grey boy. I preferred you in the beard. <laughs>